This might look like a delicious meal, and it is, but what you're looking at is something that I found on a motorway yesterday. It's roadkill. Order up. The motorway in question was the A106, and I was with a roadkill expert called John. That's the one. And with John, I've decided to go out, safely collect some roadkill. I think I saw something. Turn it into a three course meal. You're a state of that. And then serve it to some of the most well respected food critics in the UK. Mmm. Mmm, good noises. Mm. Could they see it in a Michelin star restaurant? Are you pulling my leg in? And how would they react to being told it's roadkill? That pheasant you ate today was roadkill. But why am I doing this? Well, roadkill is considered to be quite an ethical way of eating meat. That looks like hummus. It's not. Peter themselves say that eating roadkill is healthier for the consumer and it's more humane. So to start this adventure, I need to wake up at 5.30am and meet a stranger I'd found on the internet. Selfie with my oven clock. It's 5.31 in the morning. Um, we're going to try and find some roadkill. We've got a guy called John the Poacher, who is a bit of an expert in roadkill. And he said early morning's the best time because the roadkill hasn't been warmed up by the sun, which makes sense, but I'm not very good in the morning. Bright and early to make sure we got the freshest roadkill possible, I drove out to East London to meet professional forager John. John! <laughs> morning, how are we? Yeah, I'm right. Lovely to meet you. I've been up since two. So. Oh cool, what have you been doing since two? I oh, was just watching Netflix, <laughs> just waiting for you to turn up. I felt bad for pulling John away from Emily in Paris, but we had a job to do. Right, John, we've got my car. Yeah, what's the best way of doing this? So the best way would be to head towards this path code. Okay. John's plan was to drive out of London into the countryside and pass some of his roadkill hotspots. But exactly what we'd find was anyone's guess. What are the main things that you find? I guess it's foxes, badgers, yeah. muntjac deer? Yeah, muntjacs, pigeons, pheasants, partridge. Ah! Yeah. With some time to kill before the search began, I just wanted to become aware of the legalities of roadkill. If you hit it, you can't pick it up and classify it as poaching. If somebody else is hitting, even if they're hitting front of you, you can claim it as roadkill. Do you make a lot of products out of the stuff that you find? Yeah. Wild garlic and pea ketchup, wild garlic salt, wild garlic butter. Shrimp soup, shrimp stew. Is, is there quite a high likelihood that we will find something today? Yeah. The hunt was on and the chemistry of this team was out of this world. We drove for two hours along some popular roadkill spots, but found nothing. So a pit stop was needed to assess the situation. Plan of action. I've never seen so little on that road as, as we've seen today. Right. It's not a good sign. Is it just a case of just going round and <laughs> just driving around and see what we can find? Pretty much. You can probably just direct me just round the round the country roads, I guess. I don't really know because I don't, you don't know. Him. Okay. Not ideal, but we persevere here on the channel. And then after four hours into our search, I spotted something. I think I got something. I was driving and I think I saw something. Up here by that tent. Yeah. I think it was a hand pheasant. That is still warm. Still warm? That's warm. Yeah, Phil. Oh god, that is still warm. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. We had just what we were after, a pheasant. And even better than that, John was happy it was in edible condition. Got a nice chance of some good meat off that. You can't get much fresher than that unless you saw it happen. So what are we going to do with it now, John? Well, what we had to do next was let John show us his skills. And at that moment I realised how it's odd that my life had culminated in such a way that I now found myself walking into a field with a man I'd met on Instagram who was holding a pheasant that we'd found on the side of the road. I, I just saw intestine. Yeah, you saw it. I felt it. Yeah. <laughs> no bruising on that at all. Fantastic. With it safely prepared by John, it was time to get it to a kitchen and to someone who knew how to cook a pheasant. And now let's get this to a chef. The chef was an old friend of mine called Josh. And Josh help runs the barbecue restaurant called Q Point London, based in Chiswick Pavilion, and they make some naughty stuff. 
And on this occasion, I needed Josh to turn this pheasant into something naughty. That's our pheasant breast. That's your pheasant breast. As a Michelin star chef was coming to taste our food in a couple of hours. Do you have anything that I can wear? All right, let's yeah, get cracking. But until then, Josh was the boss. So do I have to uh, do I have to say yes, chef, at all times? At all times. Okay. We are making a pie. Right. We're going to make pheasant pie, so we're going to do a little bit of a mirepoix. You're a stater, eh? Hey? It's big enough. Kill a pheasant with that. Well, <laughs> do a lot more. Basically, my job was to do everything Josh said and not get in the way. Thick matchstick. A ripple. Have a little taste. Okay, so what's yeah. this? Celeriac cream. Celeriac cream. Yeah. Oh. Tastes, tastes a bit Michelin-y, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you'll check. <laughs> It must have been something in the Solariat because Josh and I suddenly found ourselves on a trip down memory lane. So Josh, we met and I was working in a pub that you were, you had a kitchen in. Yeah. And you used to give me, <laughs> you used to give me so much free food. <laughs> free food, free drinks, no? Yeah. Max would just come round the back, <laughs> drop drinks off by the sink. It's like the weirdest <laughs> drug deal ever. <laughs> yeah. A Corona for a burger. <laughs> All our reminiscing meant we actually hadn't kept track of time and our critics we're about to arrive. No, I'm still not making drinks. It's not what you know, it's who you know, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had 15 minutes left and there was still a lot to do. How long do we have left? And as the pressure in the kitchen increased, oh, it looks good, but it needs to hurry up. Our esteemed guests started to arrive. Gemma! Hello, lovely to meet you. First up, Gemma Peck, winner of the Times AA Gill Award for Emerging Food Critics. So excited for the, for the dish we've got oh uh, for today. Next through the door, Will Hughes of What Will He Cook, fellow YouTuber and foodie influencer who says things in a funny way for a living. Fresh pathway. And finally, The Big Cheese. Hello, mate. James Cochran, Michelin star chef and winner of Champion of Champions on the Great British Menu. Dunk. Yeah, dunk. dunk. That looks rubbish. <laughs> I wanted to know if the chefs would put my food into their restaurants. I'm shaking. And I was also excited to reveal where I'd sourced it from. I like fried goods. Yeah. And with all of them through the door, it was time to serve. This is so silly. Silly to the max even. Remember guys, join the fosh bit. Everything we do, silly to the max. Right. Order up. Let's go. To start, it's, well, the starter. Gemma, to start, we have fried pheasant mm -hmm. with pomme de terre batons with a pheasant gravy. Please. Thank you. Enjoy. Well, I do love anything deep fried. I love the crisscross effect. Thank you, that was me. You could try harder with your presentation. Oh. Give this guy a Michelin bib, I'll tell you, mate, or a star, for <laughs> Christ's sakes. Mmm. Okay, it's a good start. Look how I get my hands involved. There's something in the, the batter. I want to say it's like cumin. No. She's good. Yes. Pheasant is a, um, a tough bird to cook. Yeah. The hard thing about it is because there's no real fat to it. Yeah. It overcooks quite quickly. Yeah. Like you've done here. Um, the meat looks kind of janky. If it were me, I'd have something like acidic or sour in there. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm just a sucker for pickles. Interesting. Okay. And different. Okay. Um, I look forward to the next dish. Not a great start, so I needed the main course to come to the rescue. Next up, we have a deconstructed pheasant pie mm -hmm. with carrots and a celeriac jus. Looks actually pretty tasty. Thank you. Don't sound Thank so surprised. <laughs> it looks quite nice. Again. Gee, thanks. How's the presentation on this one, Will? Presentation? You've, you've smashed it. Really? Mmm. Mmm, good mm -hmm. noises. It's hearty. It's nice. You come leaps and bounds. That's fantastic. I'm actually really enjoying this. Thank you, Chef. I don't know why I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Nicer to eat than the fried pheasant, right. definitely. It's delicious. It's got real umami, a very deep flavour. The cooking of the pheasant is near enough spot on. Nice cuisson running through that. It's just delicious. Do I get to finish it? Well, you can have as much or as little as you'd like. I kind of want to finish this one. Okay, off you go, yeah. off you go. Just, no, I'll give that an 8 out of 10. Fantastic. Thank, thank you very much. I'm going to carry on eating it. Okay, thank you very much. Nice. Pudding's coming next. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and finally, our most ambitious course yet. Pudding. For dessert, we have homemade cookies with vanilla ice cream and a chocolate and pheasant liver sauce. 
Okay, wow, this is a, um, um, yeah. This looks like a bit of meat, it does. I'm quite dubious of this, but mate, this could be a revelation. Can we, can we come to my restaurant quite soon? Liver in the sauce, that's... Uh... Yeah, mate. That's well all right. Like, that's really good. That is very good. Fantastic. That is very, very good. Speechless is not mate. Are you pulling my leg here, mate? No. It's not like your normal chocolate sauce. There's definitely some, it's the liver. It'll be the liver. Offal is quite rich. Chocolate's quite rich, so all it's doing is really just enhancing the flavour. Yeah, that's those are the words we like to hear. Um, they say that on MasterChef quite a lot. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With some mixed reviews, it was now time to see if our roadkill would make it into a Michelin star restaurant. And also, I needed to tell Will. My final question, does it get your seal of approval? Could you see this in a Michelin star restaurant? I could see the second dish in a Michelin star restaurant. I would 100% give it seal of approval. I think the only thing is just let go of the fried yeah. pheasant, fried, the pheasant. fried chicken to me. So Will, that entire meal you've had, would you give it your seal of approval? I'd say it was nice enough, yes. It was, yeah. What would you say if I told you that was roadkill? I would honestly, I've seen your f***ing videos, so I believe in <laughs> every word that you were saying. That was roadkill. Does this face look surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Does that change your opinion of the meal at all? No, no, not at all. Was it, was it just as delicious? That's not my surprise face. I think I feel conflicted about right. the roadkill element, to of be course. quite honest. I know it's incredibly sort of ethical. It's my first time roadkill. Is it? If you see a dead pheasant or any animal <laughs> on the side of the road, pick it up, take it home, skin it, or give it to a little butcher, and you're in for a treat. Fantastic. James. And it goes well with chocolate. It does. Mental. So, you never know. Pheasants found on the A106 can be turned into culinary art. Liver and chocolate. Heard it here first. <laughs>